Novo class, in this video, we will be covering 7.5 annuities. And so in this section, we're ideally going to be concentrating on these two formulas here. Um, so for, um, and again, I, I know I keep showing you this page in the last video, um, but this page is on the first page of the workbook. Okay, so let me, I hope I don't have anything that you guys are not supposed to see on my screen. It doesn't look like I do. Um, so if I go to our class and we click on course syllabus, if you go down to materials, you'll notice that there's a link to a workbook. Okay, um, in that workbook, they should have the formulas, but I think also under course policies, you have the final exam formulas down here under the final exam section. And if you click on that, um, you also get a copy of that sheet. Okay, so it's at the very beginning of the workbook and it's also in its own file um, under course policies, under the section final exam. So I just wanted to let you guys know that in case you forgot from the very, very beginning of the semester. Um, I do cover that in that welcome video, but I, I mean, it's been a while. So <laughs> I know it's only been, for me, now that I'm recording, it's only been a week and a couple of days, but um, for you guys, it might have seemed like so long ago. So let me get back to what I was doing. We're going to continue here and I will keep referencing this sheet as I keep going, okay? So 7.5 annuities says, use the appropriate formula to find the value of the annuity and then find the interest. And so there are two problems with these same directions. Um, and one last thing I wanted to mention is that these sheets that I keep referring to with all the formulas, they are provided on each of the four tests. So you, I, if you, you would have already taken test one and two by now. Um, and so you would have seen these in the test themselves, okay? Um, the only thing that won't be here is this information. So if you need to write that on a note sheet, make sure you do. Remember you are allowed one note sheet aside from this formula sheet while you're taking tests. So I would definitely be including this, maybe including labels, um, and that sort of thing. But anything else extra that you think you'll need for the test, make sure you include it on your one note sheet. Back to our um, section. So it says the periodic deposit is $60 at the end of each month, and the rate is 3% compounded monthly. Um, and the time is 35 years. So they're asking me to find the value of annuity. So that's what the A stands for. This periodic or PM is the periodic uh, value. So that's going to be the 60. And then one plus my rate is 3%. The N since it's compounded monthly is 12. And then the exponent is 12 times the number of years, which is 35 years. Minus one over 3% again over 12. So I typed in this whole thing. Now remember, you cannot type in brackets in your calculator, you have to type in double parentheses. So what I would do is I would hit fraction and then 60 parentheses for the bracket, parentheses for the parentheses, one plus fraction 3% over um, 12, go to the side, close the parentheses, raise it to the 12 times 35, get down, hit the minus one, and then put it in parentheses. And at the bottom, um, parentheses three, oops, delete. Fraction, 3% over 12, go to the side and close it. So it should look exactly like it does on your paper. There's more with the minus one on the top, but you can't see it. Um, and when I hit enter, I get this. And since it said round up to the nearest dollar, what that means is it doesn't matter what this decimal is. This decimal could have been zero one, and that zero one would have caused this to go up to four. 
That's what it means when they say round up. It's very coincidental that this happens to be an eight. So even if you were rounding to the nearest dollar, this would still cause this to go up to a four. But when you say round up, it doesn't matter what this is. It's like you can't count part of a dollar. You have to count the whole darn dollar. So even if you just have one cent, you still have to go up to the next dollar, okay? So be very careful to those directions. There's a difference between round two and round up to. Be very, very careful. Now, um, the second part of this question says find the interest. So since I know the amount that's going to occur at the end, I need to uh, subtract the amount that has been deposited over all that time. So I did $60 since it's the end of each month, that's 12 months times a year, per year, and then times the 35 years. So this value is going to give me all of the money that I've deposited. And I know that this is what I end up with. So if you if I did that math there, 60 times 12 times 35. So this is how much I have deposited over the 35 years. So if this is how much money we have after all those 35 years, subtract the amount of money that you put in, and that's what gives you this interest amount. Okay. Um, and again, I'm just showing you how I came up with that 252. So $60 per month times 12 months per year, and then times 35 years, all the years and the months are gone. And you just end up with 60 times 12 times 35, which is this, okay? Now it's just me elaborating what's in that parenthesis. Now number two says, we have a periodic deposit of $2,500 at the end of every three months, 5.25% compounded quarterly, and the time is eight years. So the PM is 250 or 2,500 rate in quarterly means four times per year and T is already in year, so that's eight. So I plugged everybody into the annuity formula and I rounded to an, or up to the nearest dollar, so I got this. Now, if I want to figure out what I invested, I'm going to do this for every three months times 12 months per year times the eight years. So I typed in 2,500 over three times 12 over one times eight, and it popped out with 80,000. So if I want to know the amount of interest, I'm going to take the amount of annuity that I have after the eight years minus the amount of money that I put in at, in eight years. And that gives you the total amount of interest. So for the next three problems, we have these same um, directions. It says, use the appropriate formula to determine the periodic deposit and how much of the financial gold comes from deposits and how much comes from interest, okay? So now we're asking to find the periodic deposit. So instead of using the annuity formula, now we're gonna use the formula for finding the periodic deposit. So I wrote the formula down here, and then I just plugged in all of the values. I do know A, which is the future goal or the financial goal, this is A. So A is 120,000, my rate is 3%. Compounded annually means N equals one, so my N is one. 1 plus 3% over 1 raised to the power 1 times the number of years, which is 16 minus 1. And so I typed all of this in my calculator, just like I showed it in the previous problem. And we rounded to the nearest dollar. We rounded up to the nearest dollar, and we got this. Okay. And so again, I tried to express what's going on here. Um, the digit only needs to be one or more, not even one. It could be anything. It could be um, 0 0.01 or more. If you even just have one cent, it's automatically gonna go up to the next dollar, okay? So in this case, if I just type that in there, let's type it in there real quick so you could see what it looks like.
So if I hit enter, see it's this, and I have to round up. So it doesn't matter what that decimal is. The fact that there is a decimal is why I have to round this up to 5954. And so that's why this is the result. Okay, now for the next part, it wants to know how much is from the investment and how much is from interest, okay? So it's essentially the exact same steps that we did for problems two and three on the second parts. So we take this periodic payment and since it's happening at the end of each year, it's this amount per year times the 16 years, and you end up with this amount invested, okay? So that's the amount that's invested, that's the p-value. If I wanna find how much was interest, I'm gonna take the total financial goal, because that's what happened after all the time, after the 16 years, minus the amount that we deposited, or whoever this is deposited, and then that gives you that this is the amount that was from interest, okay? So number four, very similar. We don't know the periodic payments. So we gotta fill in everything. Um, we do know that it's 6.25% and compounded monthly means N equals 12. It's 40 years and we do have the future value A, which is uh, $1.25 million. So I typed in the 1,250,000 R over N, one plus R over N to the NT minus one. All of that in the calculator, I ended up with this, but to round up, and this is how I, I do the symbols for rounding, but I'm rounding up. So it doesn't matter what this decimal is, it makes this six go up to 587. Um, now, I took that 587 deposit amount, and since it's at the end of each month, that's this much time per month, times 12 months per year, times the 40 years. So those cross out, those cross out, this times 12 times 40 happens to be this amount. And so that is from the deposits or investment. Invested. I tried to squish it in there. Um, but if I want to know how much is from interest, we're going to take that A minus the P, and that will give us the interest. Okay. Um, now, number five, very similar, just different values. So this time, our future value is 30,000. Our rate is 2.5. Compounded quarterly means N equals four. And then one plus the rate over four raised to the power of four times six years minus one. Um, and then this should be in brackets if you wanna be consistent. So you type all of that in the calculator, you end up with this decimal, but it says to round up. So that four does make this go to a three when you're rounding up. So then I took that payment and it says every three months. So it's this for every three months, so 12 months per year times six years, um, I did this over three times 12 over one times six in the calculator, and I ended up with this value. So this is the part that came from the deposits or the invested. Um, and then if I wanna get the interest, you're gonna take the A minus the, uh, the P, and that equals your interest. And so I got the interest there. So it's deposit slash what is invested. So number six says, the following problem refers to the stock table for ABC Inc, a tire company. Given below, use the stock table to answer the following questions. So here's the stock table. I will have to keep coming back to this because this problem continues on the next page. So I will keep coming back. I might have to take a second to let it adjust each time, but we'll, we'll work with what we got, okay? So part A says, what were the high and low prices for a share for the past 52 weeks? It says 52 week high, and then this one just said low, but they're both the 52 week high and low. So it's just a matter of reading the information and plugging that in. Um, for the 52 week high and the 52 week low. So I actually have the wrong values in here. What do you know? I don't know what I was thinking. 
So this is actually going to be 83.93, and then this one's going to be 48.32. Now for part B, it says, if you owned 700 shares of this stock last year, what dividend did you receive? So you'll go over here to um, the dividend area, and this is the multiplier for however many shares you have, okay? So since I have 700 shares, I'm gonna do 700 times 1.16, which turned out to be $812. For part C, it says, what is the annual return for the dividends alone? How does this compare to a bank offering 3% interest rate, okay? So what we did here is we looked for, um, it says, what is the annual return? So your annual return is that yield, okay? And the yield is going to be right here under yield percent, which is 1.5. So that means it's 1.5%. Now the yield is lower than the back bank offer, not back, bank. because the bank is offering a 3% interest rate, whereas the yield is only 1.5%. Um, and it says, but there is still the potential to get a better return on the stock investment, only because we know that those numbers change daily and annually, okay? So even though right now the, the yield is only 1.5%, when they compare, you know, a week from now, the data from a week from now and a year out, it may be a higher number at that point, okay? And if you look at it a whole nother year from now, it might be a lot more higher than 1.5%. Um, it could also be lower, but there's a possibility that it could be higher. Now, part D says, how many shares of this stocks company were traded yesterday? And so that's going to be found under this volume 100s. So this is the number that, of stock that have been traded times 100. So down here, I took that value under volume 100 and I multiplied it by 100. And this is how many shares were sold yesterday, okay? Part E says, what were the high and low prices for a share yesterday? So it's not the 52 week high and low, it's the regular high and low. Okay, and so for the regular high and low, those are the two values that I included here and here. Now, no, the next part says, what was the price at which a share traded when the stock exchange closed yesterday? So keyword is closed. And so all you do is look under the word closed and you find that value that they're asking for. Now, G says, what was the change in price for a share of stock from the market close to two days ago to yesterday's market close? Well, that's exactly what this tells you, the net change. So whatever that net change value is, that's what they're asking you for here in Part G. Now, in Part H, it says, compute the company's annual earnings per, check, per share. And so this is the formula that I used. Um, when it talks about stocks, it was on this sheet. Annual earnings per share is the closing price per share over the PE ratio. So over here, the closing price was this and the PE ratio was this. So I took that number over 17, got this decimal, and then I rounded it to 3.47. Now, number seven says, at the age of 27 to save for retirement, you decide to deposit um, $30 at the end of each month in an IRA that pays 4% compounded monthly. A, use the following formula to determine how much you will have in the I IRA. Oh, I think I said IPA. That's a beer. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> IRA, <laughs> when you retire at age 65. Um, so our P value, and it's actually not P, but PM, right? Because that's a periodic payment. So the PM is 30. 
Um, and then this should also be PM and PM. And I am using this formula. Okay. So we're going to take um, the rate was 4% in, it said a compounded monthly. So N is 12. And if I'm trying to retire when I'm 65, but I'm currently 27, I'm going to subtract those to figure out how many years this investment is going to take place. Okay. So we plugged everybody in. We plugged in the 31 plus R over N raised to the N times T minus one over R to the N. I typed in all of that in the calculator and I got this value and then I rounded it to the nearest dollar. So this one did not say round up, it just said round. So notice I just have the squigglies, not the squigglies with the arrow going up. So there's no arrow going up here. Okay, it's just a regular squiggly. So this is not enough to make that go up. So it stays 32,046. Then if I wanna figure out, um, cause it says use the following formula to determine how much you will have in the IRA when you retire at age 65. This is it, okay? So this is the answer to part A. But part B says, um, oh, I don't even have the part B on here. Part B, and I, I just totally didn't even write it in here, but put part B, it asked me for the interest. So for part B, I would say that's the interest. What is the interest earned? Well, in order for me to figure that out, I have to know how much money I put into this thing, right? So I know how that's how much I'm gonna have at the end, but I need to know how much of that was my own money versus how much of it was interest. So I'm going to take my $30 payment at the end of each month times 12 months per year times the 38 years. So that gives me 30 times 12 times 38, which is this value. So this is my total deposits or my investment. Okay, so I'm going to take the amount of money that I, that I have minus the amount of money that I invested, and that gives you the amount of interest. Okay, now for number eight, we have to offer scholarships to children of employees, a company invests 14,000 at the end of every three months at an annuity that pays 8% compounded quarterly. So how much will the company have in the scholarship funds at the end of 10 years? So the P is 14,000, that's what I'm investing and it's PM. Um, R is 8%, N is um, compounded quarterly, so N is equal to four, and then 10 years, so T is 10. So I plugged everybody in where they belong. I typed it in the calculator. It just said regular round to the nearest dollar. So this seven did cause this seven to go up. Um, and then for me to calculate the interest, I am going to have to figure out how much money we actually, or this person, this company put, put in. So if it's 14,000 for every three months, we gotta multiply that by 12 months per year. And then that gets multiplied by the 10 years. So 14,000 over three times 12 times 10 happens to be this amount. So if I take the amount of money that they have in this account, minus the amount of money that they put in the account, this is the amount of interest that they earned. Okay, similarly for number nine, it says you would like to have $2,500 in three years for a special vacation following graduation by making deposits at the end of every six months in an annuity that pays 4% compounded semi-annually. So A, determine how much you should deposit at the end of every six months. So we're trying to find that periodic payment, okay? So I am using, again, this formula here. So the amount that you need afterward is 2,500. R over N semi-annually means N is two. One plus 4% over two raised to the two times the number of years, which is three years, minus one. I typed all of that in the calculator and I got this number. And this one did say round up to the nearest dollar. 
So it didn't matter what that decimal was, just the fact that there is a decimal after the dot makes this go up to 397. Um, so then for part B, it says blank of the 250 or 2,500 comes from your deposits and so much comes from interest. So let's go figure out what our deposits are and then we can use that to figure out what our interest is. So if I'm doing this much every six months, we gotta multiply that by 12 months per year and we gotta multiply that by the three years. So I did six, or I'm sorry, I did 397 over six times 12 times three and I ended up with this value. So that is how much um, I deposited. Then if you take the amount of money that's in the account minus the amount of money that I deposited, that gives you the amount of money that was earned from interest. Now, number 10, last problem in this section, says how much should you deposit at the end of each month into an investment account that pays 8% compounded monthly to have 2 million when you retire in 39 years? How much of the 2 million comes from interest? So the PM is going to be 200 or 2 million times 8% over compounded monthly means N equals 12. One plus 8% over 12 to the power 12 times T minus one. All of that gave me this decimal. Since it did say round up, it is going to become 623. So that is the answer to the first part. That's how much I need to deposit each uh, month. Then if I'm depositing that per month, then I need to multiply by 12 months per year. And finally, by the number of years that we're making these deposits. And so we end up with 623 times 12 times 39, which is this amount. So this is the total investment. And then look at that, 2 million minus this total investment gives me $1,708,436 from interest. That is a lot of interest, okay? So these long-term investments are the ones that pay out the most. The longer you let it go in there and accumulate, the more money you make. Okay, that is the end of this particular um, section. So I will see you guys in the next one.